Dems and one was too young to vote. This time round, they were all undecided. We'll be finding out how they voted and whether they're happy with the coalition government they got. And as Labour's leadership candidates begin to line up, we'll be exploring what it would take for Labour to win over floating voters like these. That's something the party will have to do if it is ever going to govern this country again. But first, our usual qualification, there is nothing scientific about our focus group, but the results should be very interesting. Now over to our professional pollster, Johnny Heald. Welcome. Welcome back. Um, my first question is, so how did you vote? If you voted for the uh, Labour Party, just put your hand up. One. Oh dear. If you voted for the Lib Dems, put your hands up. Two. OK. And then, so six of you voted for the Conservative Party. OK. So when you saw this, what thoughts do you have? I feel he's sold his, himself down the river. Who, Cameron Mr has. Cameron. Why? In what ways has he sold himself well, down the river? Well, I think he didn't have the conviction, of, you know, the conviction of his principles, and he was held to ransom by Nick Clegg. Does anyone else think he's been held to ransom by Nick Clegg? I think, um, you know, for the good of the country, I think a deal had to be made. Whether he sold himself down the river, yes, there has to be compromise, like in any coalition or any sort of negotiation. But as a person who voted Conservative, how do you feel with what you've got? How do you feel about that? I'm glad that David Cameron, you know, is, is, a, is in number 10. Nick Clegg being the Deputy Prime Minister, perhaps, may, may, maybe not. In my view, I think the Conservatives have been cheated somewhat in that David Cameron got more votes and why are they, you know, necessarily appearing together at number 10? This is more like a double act, as though they've both won equal number of votes. And Tracy, how do you, are you excited by the prospect of this? Yeah, I just think that, you know, they're fresh, they're, they're going to push all their policies together. So, there's not, you can't lose, really, can you? OK, because, I mean, you didn't vote, you didn't vote for Nick Clegg, and yet here you have the Deputy Prime Minister. You've got two for the price of one, didn't you? <laughs> they can be replaced. You'd like, you'd like to see what happens in five years' time, why? Yeah, yeah. Because I feel it's going to be a lot of backstabbing. Yes. Mm. Go on, explain. I mean, like, when it comes up to the next election, is, is Cameron going to be saying, right, vote for this, a, a, another coalition for a further five years, or is he going to be saying, come with Conservatives, um, we ain't really getting along with Liberal uh, Democrats, so basically we, we'll use them for the time being, but when it comes down to the next election, we're going to push them out. For those of you who voted for the Lib Dems, how do you feel now about the government that we've got? I'm, I'm happy with it, actually. I did say that, you know, I think that they're a good combination. I said that last time, and they're a very good balance. So I'm happy with the outcome. If we are going to have David Cameron as the Prime Minister, then hopefully Nick Clegg and um, some of the other guys can kind of temper the Tories down a bit. So that's what they think about the new government, but what about Labour? Now Brown's gone, can the party win around floating voters like these? Is the future for Labour now brighter, now that Brown has gone? I think so. And I think that one of the new, newer, younger um, contenders for the leadership w would be more like perhaps David Cameron, Nick Clegg. They both look good. And, and they're These young, they yeah, they look good, and, and they're kind of the them. new age, I would say. Do you, are Labour at the same level now that the Tories were in 1997? In terms of where both parties are now, I mean, arguably you could say some of their ideologies are the same, and sort of they share that centre ground. So, no, they're not in the position that the, you know, the Tories were back in 97. Well, they have to make themselves electable. You had the feeling with the Labour Party that everybody was waiting in the wings um, almost certain they were going to lose and waiting for Brown to resign and then just waiting to put in their um, nomination for their own leadership. What do Labour need to do? <coughs> for I you, just, as a voter? I just think they just need to join together and pull together. Okay. I, I just think, to be honest, they've lost a bit of their backbone, especially, you know, even like the way Brown just instantly resigned. No fight in them, so... That's what they want to see from the Labour Party, but who, if anyone, can deliver it? Look at the five of them together.
We introduced the group to five potential Labour leadership contenders and showed some short clips of them in action. First, here's left-wing backbencher John Cruddus during Labour's deputy leadership contest. I think we need to build tens of thousands of new council houses. I think we need to reconsider where we're going in terms of the privatisation of frontline services, especially in terms of the NHS. How did he come across there? He seemed like quite an old-style politician, so he seemed very old Labour um, and very kind of traditional Labour views. He comes across as very sort of the dogmatic left-wing and, and wants to get his ideals uh, through before he gets through things which are more important to this country as a whole. Next up, former Energy and Climate Change Secretary and long-standing Brown ally, Ed Miliband. The people who make change happen are people who are optimists and idealists. People who believe that we can safeguard the world for future generations. We are those people. We are the idealists. OK. Well, Maureen, what did you think of it? Yes, he comes across very well, and for the younger people as well. He's got far more modern ideas than the other one did. OK, anyone else? Quite a few of my friends fancy him, which tends to help with a politician, <laughs> being an attractive man. Tracy, do you fancy him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, Andy Burnham, Health Secretary under Gordon Brown, but regarded as a Blairite. A great NHS working alongside a new national care service. That's a vision worth fighting for. Tell me what went through your mind when you saw that. Scripted. 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 Monotoned. Robotic. Right, okay, no robotic. Yeah. He looked like he'd rather be anywhere else than there. Yeah. He didn't look he comfortable mm. at all. Next, Miliband the Elder, David, a former foreign secretary and formerly a close Blair ally. Tell your friends that for all the challenges that undoubtedly still remain, Britain is better because the British people elected a Labour government. So what feelings went through your mind when you saw that? He's not as polished as his brother. Not as polished as his brother in what way? In the way he puts it over. I, I, in his I, presentation. I disagree. disagree. I, I, I disagree. disagree. Yeah. You, there's something that you saw. What did you I see in a that? Lot more, I mean, it reminds me a lot about, actually, Blair in terms of his hand gestures and sort of his oratory as well. He exuded a level of, of authority. Um, calmness. He's not as warm as his brother. Um, OK, yeah, he, he's a more sensible party leader, I think, out of the two brothers. He surprised me, actually. Um, OK, I prefer him now than the brother. Fair enough, like, his brother was all nice and warm and stuff, but he... I don't know. He just seemed really real in what he was saying. And finally, the former school secretary and combative Brown loyalist, Ed Balls. Our plan to rebuild every secondary school in this decade, that is what is at stake. Education to 18, the future of our country, that is what is at stake in this election. He seems really one-sided, uncompromising. Like, I know my views, but that is could be, that, that, could that, be good? that could be a good thing. That we need in politics? We do need a strong politician, especially if they're going to take over Labour. Is he the right man to take over the leadership of the Labour Party? No, I'm not too sure. What are you not sure about Bulls, at Bulls? I don't know, I don't want to Look say... On, just... on, go on, tell me instinctively you, you're not Looks sure. Like, I don't know, it's just like he works behind the um, kebab shop counter. <laughs> we gave each of our focus group pictures of the five men. Which of those five would most likely make you consider voting Labour? Just stick it up in front of your face. Oh, my God. That's fairly conclusive. He just looks ready. He's, he looks actually quite smug. But he's, he's, he's ready to compete. And if he was up, then I would have gone for him. So even though your man... He's now Deputy Prime Minister. If he had been the leader of the Labour Party, you would have voted Labour. I'd have gone back to Labour. To me, he looks the part of a Prime Minister, never mind just a Labour leader. If he had been in charge of Labour, would your decision... Would it have been a harder decision for you to vote Conservative? Oh, but, but yeah, for sure. 
Obviously, you can't draw any firm conclusions from a single focus group, but David Miliband is the clear favourite, raising the question of whether the Labour Party would have done significantly better if he had deposed Gordon Brown. And the focus group's favourite, uh, David Miliband, the former Foreign Secretary,